here at the Ruger Gallery at the National Farms Museum here at NRA headquarters with Phil Schreier, the senior curator here at the Farms Museum. Phil, we're back here in the Ruger Gallery talking about Hollywood guns, a great exhibit here currently on display at NRA's National Farms Museum. Tell us what treasures you have for us today. John, thanks again for having us on the show as always. And first off, I have some, a big announcement for all our viewing audience at home. The uh, Hollywood Guns exhibit that we've had on display since uh, spring of 2010 is getting an extended run. Wow. We're just like going to be here till the spring of 2012. Wow. And which is appropriate, just like a Hollywood blockbuster, we're going to extend right. the run of this show. Like a, like a play on Broadway. Oh, excellent. It just keeps on going. So spring of 2012. You know, we, oh. we, we experienced our largest year visitation in 2010 in the 75-year history of the National Firearms Museum. Wow. Due largely, in fact, to the uh, popularity and general appeal of all things Hollywood. That is so cool. So tell us what you have for us today. Well, John, you know, uh, a lot of times, uh, especially when I've been, you know, watching a film, I'll see, uh, I'll see, you know, somebody uh, take a gun and do something just makes me cringe, uh -oh. you know, like nails on a blackboard. <laughs> now you remember in, uh, in, in Dirty Harry, you know, when uh, he goes up to the top of the, uh, the monument there, I think it was Signal Hill, possibly. Coit Tower. Coit Tower. Yeah, that's up in it. San Francisco. And, you know, Andy Robinson, the Scorpio killer, he's standing there and he says, uh, you know, Clint's got the bag of money and he says, now, uh, why don't you just pull that great, you know, and he goes, ooh, that's a big one. And he says, now throw it down on the ground. Oh. And he goes like that. Yeah. Well, this is the original Dirty Harry gun, which is on exhibit here at the museum. Beautiful. Now, can you imagine? Look at that blue oh, finish. I would cry. Do you think that ever took a no. skip down a and cobblestone it, walk? And if it, if it ever did, oh, I would be heartbroken. Exactly. So what do they do? They cast a rubber copy. And as far as the camera can tell at 10, 20 feet away, it's the real deal. In fact, you'd be surprised how many people I just... You know, j j throw it in <laughs> like, <"Whoa!" laughs> and, and with little, and which is not good safe gun handling practices. Let me assure you. But, but it is a rubber gun. We'll it is a know. rubber yes. gun. Uh, but it, uh, it, it's something that can be dropped. It can be, guy can fall off a bridge and into the water with it. You know, all kinds of things uh, that uh, help preserve the uh, the functionality right. of the actual gun because these are. These aren't just props, they're tools. In the case of Dirty Harry, in the case of Quigley Down Under, the gun's almost, almost, as, as Selleck and Eastwood would want me to reiterate, yes. almost as big as the stars All, themselves. Well, almost, well, this firearm, <laughs> yes. And, and, and it, it, the thing is, the amazing thing is having, you, you're my property master, Phil, has helps me out when I'm doing a little acting myself, and having a, a firearm like this is a lot easier for an actor to be handling and, and things like that without having to handle an actual real firearm. It helps in that way as well. Right, and there, there are other reasons. Uh, one one uh, that I, I always thought was interesting was one of my favorite films, The Outlaw Josie Wales. Right. This is the first appearance uh, in, in my, you know, movie going, you know, tenure uh, of the appearance of a Colt Walker revolver. Now, the, John Wayne, of course, had one in True Grit. He called it a, a Dragoon, mm -hmm. but in fact, it was this very same gun used in both films. Wow. Now, there's a great scene in The Outlaw Josie Wales where uh, he goes into the line shack and these guys get the drop on him. And they say, now, pull that hog leg out real slow so I can count the hairs on the back of each hand. And he holds the gun out, both hands, and then does the road agent's mm -hmm. flip. Uh, which is taking a gun butt forward and rotating it uh, in one flick of the of the wrist and 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 getting the drop on somebody called a road agent spin. Which you do very well, by the way. Well, thank you. I didn't want to try. I had it. a lot of practice. The very <laughs> first gun uh, that I bought after watching Josie Wales was, was a Colt Walker. <laughs> now, in my ignorant youth of the time, I tried it once, not over my bed, and when I was able to get the bleeding stopped on my toes, <laughs> I decided to practice the road agent spin over my bed until I got it right. Wow. But the thing with this is this is a four pound nine ounce gun. And and Clint would have had to have biceps like Schwarzenegger or Popeye to do it with both hands. 
So what I found when I was uh, fishing through some uh, prop houses in San Diego, and we had the original Real Guns of Real Heroes exhibit on display, I found a pair of rubber walkers in a, uh, in a prop bin. Wow. You know, I, I bought both of them personally, brought them back home, and then found out that they were actually cast from the original oh. guns that were on loan to us from the movie. So close you can see the serial numbers oh, in the rubber of the, of the gun. You can see the Italian proof marks here on the side, and then they're just hand painted. Yeah. So it made a lot more sense that he could do that yeah. with such ease. If After were, 30, 40 takes. Yeah, and they were only weighing two wow. and a half ounces or so. So well, what's the final? This is an interesting looking firearm here. Tell us about it. Star Wars, when it came out in 1977, is fantastic and as futuristic as it appeared to us on the screen. Go back and watch it today. It almost looks primitive mm -hmm. compared to the CGI and the great things they can do on, on uh on a computer for the movie screens now. But when we first saw it oh, in 77, it just blew our socks off. Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of that was uh, filmed uh, overseas. Uh, the, uh, the prop house that supplied all the neat weapons uh, was Baptiste of, of England. Mm -hmm. And uh, George Lucas was on a budget. Now, this is a converted uh, Sterling uh, submachine gun. Uh, that has a lot of different parts uh, added to it, a Xerox counter, uh, a little spotting scope, uh, just two odd, <laughs> oddly placed nuts, uh, some windshield wipers uh, across the front here. Uh, this used to be a real submachine gun, uh, and they're expensive. Uh, so here you've got another reason why you know, rubber guns make an appearance. You can outfit 700 stormtroopers right. with rubber guns. They don't have to shoot because it's all CGI anyway, right? Right. So as long as they look just like the original. A lot cheaper and why, easier. Why pay the rental fee on one of these when the rental fee or just making these yourself is wow. going to be that much cheaper? Very cool. Very cool stuff, Phil. Now, how can folks get more information? How can they come and see Hollywood Guns at the National Firearms Museum? Well, obviously, we'd love to have you come by and make 2011 our best year out of 76. Uh, but uh, that's uh, if you'd like to do that, you, we, we're here in Fairfax, Virginia, at the intersection of Route 66 and 50. Uh, we're open seven days a week, 9.30 to 5. Admission is free, and there's ample parking. If you can't make it to Northern Virginia, Washington, D.C., why don't you visit us on the web at nramuseum.org. Phil Schreier, thank you for another fascinating installment of The Curator's Corner. Thank you, John.